Welcome back, dear viewers, to another deep dive into the mysteries that shroud our world. Today, we're venturing into the very shadowy corridors of the Jeffrey Epstein case, an enigma that has perplexed and intrigued many. But before we plunge into the heart of the matter, let me pose a question that echoes through the silence of that fateful night. Why did Jeffrey Epstein have no cellmate? One of Epstein's guards wasn't even a guard. Serene Gregg, president of the American Federation of Government Employees, Local 3148, tells the Washington Post that one of the guards assigned to Epstein's unit wasn't a correctional officer, but a fill-in who'd been pressed into service. A person familiar with jail's operations told the AP that one guard in Epstein's unit was working a fifth straight day of overtime and another guard was working mandatory overtime. The person spoke on condition of anonymity because he lacked authorization to publicly discuss jail operations. It wasn't clear what the substitute's regular job was, but federal prisons facing shortages of fully trained guards have resorted to having other types of support staff fill in for correctional officers, including clerical workers and teachers. Although the one guard doesn't currently work as a correctional officer, he had previously been one for seven years and specifically requested to work overtime shifts to make more money, one of the people said. The Bureau of Prisons considered all employees correctional workers and trains them in basic correctional duties to serve the facility in the event of a disturbance and to provide inmate supervision, according to a 2012 Government Accountability Office report on overcrowding. All new employees are sent to a training academy in Georgia for a three-week Introduction to Correctional Techniques course that covers firearms, self-defense policies, and procedures. They must also pass a physical abilities test that measures their ability to perform the essential functions of a correctional officer, such as detecting movement, climbing ladders, and using handcuffs. Officials say the FBI and U.S. Inspector General's office will investigate how Epstein died in an apparent suicide, while the probe into sexual abuse allegations against the well-connected financer remains ongoing. He was taken off suicide watch despite an earlier attempt. Epstein had been put on suicide watch with 24-hour monitoring and daily psychiatric evaluations after he was found on the floor of his cell with bruises on his neck. But he was taken off suicide watch at the end of July and returned to the jail's special housing unit for inmates requiring close supervision. The move was made less than two weeks after he had been taken off suicide watch, in which the lights are left on at night. Inmates are not allowed bed sheets, and they're all monitored around the clock by someone making notes every 15 minutes. U.S. District Judge Richard Berman, who was in charge of the criminal case against Epstein, asked the jail's warden for answers about that episode, saying in a letter Monday that it had, quote, never been definitively explained. Razor wire fencing surrounds the Metropolitan Correctional Center in New York where financer Jeffrey Epstein died while awaiting trial on sex trafficking charges. Required checks on Epstein were not made. A person familiar with the matter says Epstein was supposed to have been checked on by a guard about every 30 minutes, but investigators have learned that those checks weren't done for several hours before Epstein was found on Saturday. That person wasn't authorized to discuss the matter publicly and spoke on condition of anonymity. Guards are suspected of falsifying records. A person familiar with the probe of Epstein's death at a federal jail says guards are suspected of falsifying log entries to show that they were checking on inmates in this very unit every half hour, when they actually weren't. Epstein is believed to have killed himself early Saturday at the Metropolitan Correctional Center in New York, where he was awaiting trial in a sex trafficking case. Surveillance video reviewed after the death showed guards never made some of the checks noted in the log, according to the person familiar with the investigation. The person wasn't authorized to disclose information and spoke to the Associated Press Tuesday on condition of anonymity. The Upper East Side New York estate of multimillionaire Jeffrey Epstein. Injuries common in homicide victims. An autopsy found that Epstein sustained multiple breaks in his neck bones, according to two people familiar with the findings, deepening the mystery about the circumstances around his death. Among the bones broken in Epstein's neck was the hyoid bone, which in men is near the Adam's apple. Such breaks can occur in those who hang themselves, particularly if they're older, according to forensic experts and studies on the subject. But they are more common in victims of homicide by strangulation, the experts said. Jonathan Arden, president of the National Association of Medical Examiners, said a hyoid can be broken in many circumstances, but it's more commonly associated with homicidal strangulation than suicidal hanging. 
Arden, who was not involved in the Epstein autopsy, said that in general, the finding of a broken hyoid requires pathologists to conduct more extensive investigation. That investigation can include analysis of the location of the noose. Now, how narrow the noose is, and if the body experienced any substantial drop in the course of the hanging, the age of the deceased is also important, Martin said. The hyoid starts out as a three small bones with joint-like connections, but then hardens during middle age into a U-shape that can break more easily. If hypothetically the hyoid bone is broken, that would generally raise questions about strangulation, but it's not definitive and does not exclude suicidal hanging, he said. Epstein had no cellmate. The fact that Jeffrey Epstein had no cellmate at the time of his death adds a layer of intrigue and controversy to the circumstances surrounding his demise. This piece of information fuels speculation and raises numerous questions about the conditions of his incarceration and the adequacy of the prison's security measures, and whether there might have been foul play involved. Epstein's lack of a cellmate raises concerns about the level of oversight and surveillance within the correctional facility. In a high-profile case like this, one would expect enhanced security measures including constant monitoring and precautions to prevent any potential self-harm or harm from external sources. The absence of a cellmate prompts questions about whether Epstein received special treatment or if he was intentionally isolated from other inmates. This isolation could have implications for his mental well-being, potentially exacerbating any existing vulnerabilities. The fact that a person of Epstein's stature, with numerous powerful connections and facing serious criminal charges, was left without a cellmate underscores potential security failures within the prison system. This leads to inquiries about the effectiveness of the procedures in place to safeguard high-profile inmates. Epstein's lack of a cellmate raises concerns about the risk he may have faced, either through self-harm or external influence. Without another person in the cell, questions arise about whether the situation created an environment conducive to foul play. The circumstances of Epstein's death prompted multiple investigations, including inquiries by law enforcement agencies, internal prison investigations, and external reviews. The lack of a cellmate is a key aspect considered in these investigations to determine whether protocols were followed and, if any, negligence or intentional actions contributed to his death. So guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. For more interesting content, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more awesome content. Have a nice day and I'll see you in the next video.